It was November 22, 2018. My name is Sasha, and I was 15 years old during that time. My grandmother died a few days ago. I was devastated, hurt, including my mom and dad. I'm an only child. Anyways, a few days after her death, my family wanted to visit her house where she used to stay to pay our final respects. I had so many nostalgic memories. When going to my grandmother's, I walked to her bedroom. As I got in, I saw a doll sitting on the foot of the bed. This clay doll had brown hair with bangs, old style clothing, and brown eyes. It looked kind of creepy. I walked closer to the bed, curious as to why this is here and why grandma had it. This got really eerie and creepy, so I just left the room. Once I turned my back at the doll, I heard a thud behind me. I looked back and I saw the doll once again, but she's lying on the floor. I gained the courage to walk back into the room, kneeling and picking up the doll. The second that the doll was in my hands, I grew some sort of obsession over it, like I didn't want to let go of it. I was then called by my parents. I took the doll back home with me. It has been a few nights ever since I brought her in. My obsession with her grew every day. Every day I had her by my side. I learned her name was Evelyn. I don't know how I got it. It just seems like I just knew it. My parents seemed to not get comfortable. They were scared because of the strange paranormal activities occurring ever since I brought Evelyn. Strange paranormal activities would occur like furniture moving by itself, the TV turning on on its own, and Evelyn. She would appear in the kitchen, living room, even my parents' room. She would change the position of her head, looking at one of us. My parents wanted me to get Evelyn out of the house, but she wouldn't let me and I wouldn't let go of her. One day, I went shopping with my parents, leaving Evelyn at the house. We came back at nighttime. Once my dad opened the door, me and my mom came in. We were shocked, frightened. The living room, the kitchen, they were all trashed. There were claw marks everywhere. We saw Evelyn sitting on the couch untouched or broken. This was the most horrifying experience to me and my family had ever encountered. My mother grabbed Evelyn and walked outside. I followed her. She opened the garbage bin and threw it. I stood in silence. My father was silent as well. It was now nighttime. Everyone was sleeping, including me. I am a very light sleeper, and with almost every thud or clang, I opened my eyes immediately. Well, this time, I felt a whoosh. I opened my eyes and looked around the room. Suddenly, I heard a knock. It hit the door three times. I grabbed my phone and checked the time. It was almost 3 a.m. I got my feet to the floor and walked to my door. I twisted the doorknob and opened it. I was in complete shock and in fear. It was Evelyn. Sitting in front of my door, how could she get in the house? I questioned myself. Why was Evelyn sitting in the hallways of my house when she was supposed to be in a garbage bin? I then had the most chilled and scariest experiences. I heard a psst behind the back of my ear. I gasped and looked back quickly. I wish I hadn't done that. As I turned around, I screamed. There was someone behind me. I was prey to him. I screamed and fell down, crying in terror. My mom and dad came out of their room and ran to me, helping me calm down. My dad asked me what's wrong, and I pointed at Evelyn, still sitting in the hallway, staring at the entrance of my room. My mom had the same reaction and the same look I had. It was all fear. The next day, my mom called over a priest to come by to the house and have a look at the doll. He came in with a case that contained crosses and holy water. The priest was shocked because of how huge the claw marks around my house were. He said he wanted to see it. So I walked to my room as he followed. He walked in and picked the doll up. I explained to him of how I became obsessed with Evelyn every time I held her. He looked at me, and as he looked behind me, he was shocked and frightened. He walked back and dropped Evelyn. I asked him what's wrong. He 
He brought me back to the living room with my parents. We all sat down as the priest explained to us what he saw behind me. My parents and I were beyond terrified of our lives. He said he saw a little girl with an eerie resemblance of Evelyn holding hands with a bizarre being that doesn't even look human. He described that he had long wrapped horns on his head, long fingernails used as claws, and his teeth were all sharp and crooked. He inherited a third eye on his forehead, and his skin was all red. The priest says that for all this to go away, he would need to take Evelyn back to the church and perform rituals. We agreed to his terms, and the priest took Evelyn with him. He said he will eventually call us if he has any information into where this demon came from. It has now been a few days, no strange things happening. It was finally safe. My parents came to his church one day to talk about Evelyn. I didn't go because I had school at that time. Once I came back home, my parents told me about Evelyn. She was a doll made near the 1900s, and it is said that the spirit of the doll was a girl named Evelyn Matthews. My parents didn't know why Grandma had that doll, but it left us with a lot of questions. I'm 20 years old now, and I still feel like I'm being haunted by her. I'm hoping she is gone from me and my family for good. I hope I can peacefully forget her. I am a father of two children and a wife. My oldest child is Carlton and my youngest is Eddie. Carlton is seven years old and Eddie is five. We moved to our new house and stayed for about four months. Me and my wife Martha loved this as this was our dream house. But as days go by, strange activities start to happen around the house. I walked into Eddie's room one day. He was in his bed drawing something. Eddie enjoys drawing a lot, so I bought him some color markers that he'll enjoy using. I asked him what he was drawing, and he showed me. I quickly noticed something in the drawing. The house he drew to the window showed some red weird figure watching us. I asked him who that was, and he said I don't know. I always see her up to that window, he said. I didn't think too much of it, and I thought it was just some imaginary friend. Kids make imaginary friends when they're young, so I just played along. After a few days, things started getting weird. We were eating dinner one day, and Eddie was just drawing. Martha asked what he was drawing, so he showed her. Instead of showing Eddie a proud look, she showed a serious one. It seemed like she was looking behind Eddie. I asked her what was wrong. She took Eddie's drawing and showed it to me. I took it for a better look. I was in deep concern now. This photo shows how creepy this is. As you can see, it shows a picture of us eating dinner, and a red figure with a long black hair. I thought to myself if that was the same red figure I saw in Eddie's drawing a few days back. Eddie wrote all of our names, including the red figure. The name said it was Lori. I asked Eddie who Lori was. He said Lori is the person who watches him every night and talks to him while he's alone. I start to rethink that Lori might not be imaginary after all and might be real. My mind was telling me that this house might be haunted by some sort of spirit, but if I tell this to my family, my wife, and eldest son, they would think I'm some sort of delusional idiot. As the days come by, Carlton, my eldest son, tells me that Eddie has been talking to himself lately, and he said that Eddie talks to himself like he is scared of something. I got scared listening to Carlton as to what he had to say. Eddie is growing some sort of bond one day, I was alone while Martha was going to pick up the kids from school. I was done cleaning Carlton's room, and I went for Eddie the next. As I got into Eddie's room to clean, I saw some drawings on his bed. I went and looked over. There were some drawings of the family, enjoying and having fun. I then stumbled across another drawing. This photo shows how worse this situation could be. In this photo, Martha is protecting Carlton while I run to save Eddie being taken from Lori. This happens during nighttime. I heard a creak behind me and I look back. It was Eddie with a scared look on his face. I walked to him while holding his drawing. I showed it to him and asked what it was. He said that Lori was taking him somewhere while I tried to get him back. I asked him why he drew this and he said, 
she told me to. Who? I asked. He said Lori. Now I know that Lori is a woman, but why the red skin? I questioned myself. I asked him if he could draw Lori's face of what she looks like. He nodded. I was next to him for the next few minutes while he was drawing. I watched him draw, and it made me think I should take him to art school sometime, because of how good he drew. He finally finished and showed me the drawing. I was horrified and shocked to see what Lori looked like in Eddie's description. This drawing shows that Lori had a third eye on her forehead. Her eyes were all yellow, with black and red as a small pupil. Her skin is red and had black hair. This drawing terrifies me even to this day, and even talking about her still sends chills to my spine. For the next few nights, I wanted Eddie and Carlton to come and sleep with me and Martha. I didn't want this thing close to anyone. I showed Martha Eddie's drawing of Lori, and she was horrified, and she understood. I heard crying, and I woke up including Martha and Carlton. I looked at both sides of the bed, and Eddie wasn't there. I suddenly remembered of that drawing of Eddie being taken by Lori. That's what's going to happen tonight, I thought of. I told Lori and Carlton to stay in the room. I ran downstairs and saw Lori. She was horrifying looking. She had a human physique, but with red skin. Her hands had sharp nails in her face. It perfectly matches the description of Eddie's drawing. She was pulling Eddie's arm, trying to take him outside the house. I intervened and snatched Eddie, holding him in my arms. Lori looked at me furious and snarled. I ran back upstairs, carrying Eddie and going back to the room. My family was deeply struck in fear. Eventually, after a few hours later, we ran to the garage, to my car, and drove off. I looked at the side mirror and saw Lori staring at us through a window. We eventually made it to my mom and dad's house, which was a 10 minute drive, and stayed for the rest of the night. My parents was shocked after I told them what happened. They said me and my family can stay here anytime, and I was grateful. I was also glad that my family is safe, especially Eddie. If I didn't make it in time to save Eddie from Lori, he would have been taken from me. God knows what Lori would do to Eddie if she actually took him, but glad it didn't happen. I have never been this horrified and scared for my life. I am quite the explorer when it comes to walking, but I'm not so sure of that. Not after what I just witnessed. I was exploring the woods near my neighborhood with two of my friends. We stumbled across an abandoned building. This was exciting because we would find interesting objects or artifacts. Before we came in, I spotted a dark hooded figure staring down at me far away. I questioned myself, is he also exploring? How is he watching? Anyways, I went into the building with my friends, ignoring that the guy was staring at me. The abandoned building almost seemed like a hospital, due to the rusty old beds in every room and operation rooms. One of my friends, Aiden, was recording the whole exploration, and then my other friend, Bassin, didn't feel quite comfortable as he believes in ghosts and fairy tales. Me and Aiden are quite the ones fearless on these adventures, while Bassin is the scared one. As we continue through the halls of the abandoned hospital, we see markings on the wall. Usually and normally it would have been graffiti, but instead they were markings. Scratches. This started to creep out Bassin as the markings were drawn into some sort of ancient writing. I look outside the window, seeing if it's getting dark outside, and it is. It was at sunset. I went to remind Aiden that the sun was setting and we should be getting back home. Aiden was too stubborn and didn't want to listen. Bastin was now serious and frightened. He wanted to go home. We all heard footsteps trembling at the end of the hallways. Aiden screamed hello, while me and Bastin were silent. We see a dark hooded figure who seems to be walking in a weird form or some sort. I realized that it was the same person I saw earlier before I walked in the building. 
Aiden is now being real dumb and starts to approach the mysterious person. He started talking and making fun of the person while he's walking. This was then that it would be our last time seeing Aiden, our only friend. As Aiden gets up face to face, the stalker grabs Aiden by the throat, lifting him up, breaking his neck in the process. Aiden's body lay on the ground. Me and Basson were shocked, horrified by this. The stalker then looks at us and raises his arms. He points at us and starts rushing to us. We started screaming and ran back to the other way, running from him. We eventually made it out of the door and continued sprinting. I kept thinking and thinking of that moment when that stalker killed Aiden and we just left him. I had regret in my mind while running with Basson. We ran through the woods on our way to the streets. As we kept running, we heard the most horrifying sound and we'll never forget it. I ran almost faster than ever and ran in front of Basson, who was running out of breath. We eventually made it to the streets. I tried to remember which way we went from my house. Basson needed a little rest, but I kept telling him that we have to run or we die here. He listened. So we ran for just a few more minutes. I looked behind us and we saw the stalker, standing there, not even chasing us. He was only staring at us from a distance. He was only staring at us from a distance. We kept running and running until we reached to my neighborhood and to my house. My mom and dad was shocked and terrified to see me and Basson crying. We told them about what happened, about Aiden, the stalker, everything. My mom and dad both hugged me and Basson to help us cope at what we just witnessed. My mom called the police and reported. She then calls Aiden's parents and we're about to tell them of what happened. I didn't know or heard of Aiden's family again after my mom told him. Me and Basson were traumatized for the rest of our lives and I had guilt for Aiden's death. If I had never brought up the idea of going to the woods, bringing my friends, then Aiden would still be alive to this day. I also had questions to myself, to why that stalker was there, and did he live to that abandoned hospital building? Did we break into his home? Did they find Aiden's body there, or does his body still reside there to this day, rotting there, or is his flesh being eaten by that stalker? Those are the questions I still ask myself from time to time. I'm still friends with Basson, and we still talk about that night. The night where we broke into a stalker's home.